Yeah, yeah. yeah we made it. <laughs> We've made it. We're exhausted. The, my Mus feet are hurting. Our yeah. musculoskeletal systems are aching. We need an MRI, I guess. We need an MRI. Yeah. How are you feeling, Christoph? Excited, nervous, pumped. He's ready to meet some people and make sure they understand what we're actually doing. 2014 is the first time I came. Coming into this big city of Chicago with all the towers, first time in the United States, so it was mesmerizing. It's crazy, like if 10 years ago somebody would have told me that's going to happen, you know, I would have said, yeah, you're totally crazy. I mean, companies in different countries are doing teleradiology, you know, having obviously my own booth here. It's a crazy ride. How do you feel after four days of RSNA? How has this changed your perspective on life? It's, it's interesting. Well, perspective on life, maybe not so much, <laughs> but that would be an old thing. But a couple of interesting things uh, we realized here is, first of all, not many people actually know the YouTube channel. That's a very big takeaway for us. And I was under this impression, uh, especially after ESSR, that most people are familiar with the YouTube channel. And it's actually not the case. So there was a lot of groundwork we did. You're less people. famous than you thought you were. I'm less famous than I thought I am. So Which is a good thing. It's a good thing. It means there is more potential. Different countries, they have different words for things. And so the fellowship term yeah. is such a confusing one even it, virtual even virtual like yeah. i had one person she said virtual yeah is it, is it not real like you know <laughs> it's kind of like, like it's, yeah it's real we need a different tagline pushing more the coaching yeah. aspect of it rather than promoting it as a fellowship some might be under the impression it's just after residency and yeah. it's actually not the case right it's a fully fledged out coaching program for any radiologist at any stage and i found there was a lot of um quite self-assured yeah. american radiologists who kind of I don't need a fellowship, like, or people who just said very matter-of-factly, like, I've got a, I've got a fellowship, thanks. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. I, I yeah. Kind of Some people think it's something you do once and then you're set for life, yeah. right? It's actually ongoing, continuous education and giving support to people, even if they're MSK radiologists, right? One of your analogies for saying, look, if any athlete, any tennis player would always have a coach, you know, you exactly, would never yeah. just go blind for your entire exactly, life. Yeah. And one line that resonates with people when I say it is, if you don't get feedback regularly, over time, blind spots develop. Exactly. That's the, that's the whole thing. And the longer you're away from a institution which offers you that capabilities of feedback, the, you know, the more blind you become mm. and you will reiterate on mistakes nobody corrects you on, you will think that you're actually doing a good job where maybe the orthopedic surgeon might think, oh, I don't want to read these reports of this specific radiologist anymore because actually reports are crappy. And they, and they won't tell you? They won't tell you. They will not tell you. This comes to the second big takeaway. We met some amazing people, like yeah. Collective Minds are so interesting what they're doing, we'll come to that, but also Modality. They, yeah, they... we met with Modality, yeah. that was certainly interesting uh, discussion we had, Trevor. Um, Navigating Radiology. Navigating Radiology doing YouTube channel. A great yeah. YouTube channel and body imaging. Body imaging. Um, and MRI Essentials, our neighbours. Yeah. yeah, they're um, quite here. It's interesting, there is sometimes overlap, but it's not like a fully fledged out competition. I think mm. there are things that we can learn from each other. I think that's one of our very interested in actually exploring things together. So I think that was interesting. I didn't or was not fully cognizant of the differences. I mean, I kind of know because people often mention modality, um, mm -hmm. you know, when they're thinking about the fellowship. But the big difference, not just with them, but actually with anyone is I don't think there's any other online learning where radiologists can bring their own cases, yes. let alone just their MSK MRI cases, but yes, their, their own cases, cases full stop yeah. Yeah. and get feedback on them exactly. consistently. Yeah. That's pretty much uh, a unique thing we offer. There are obviously other educational courses where people have real cases to work with, get feedback on written reports, maybe even in uh, conferences online where they have to kind of like uh, solve a case but it's never their own case so they don't really have the skin in the game mm -hmm. as opposed in our program people have skin in the game like if they can make you know what, what they learn in the fellowship if I give them feedback and they can apply this directly to their case and send the report out with this input they get from an expert community or from me then this will have potentially a very high impact for them because the orthopedic surgeon might be super happy with the report they can build up a reputation for themselves and they will remember, like, if, mm. if, you, if you do this, it's different if you have a, a fake case or a real case, that's the difference. They also help each other out and then they get feedback on the feedback they give to other people. So mm. it's this whole chain reaction, getting feedback from all these different angles, from me, from community, from fellows, in the live sessions, mm. asynchronous, and these things, they add up over time. I almost was thinking of a tagline, like, 
the only place you can get feedback on your MSK yeah, MR cases. Go, let's do it. <laughs> if it's not true, if anyone knows any other, please correct yeah. us. It's a great thing. On the other hand, it's very time consuming because I'm getting challenged every week with difficult cases from the community. I sometimes don't know the answer. Mm. I have to find the answer on the spot. I have to go into the literature, Google. I show them how I would solve the case if it was my real case. And it is my real case. Yeah. I have to solve it. It's not, a, I don't know, ask somebody else. That's not why people are in the program. So I find the answer online. I give them a solid strategy approach. That when they see me solve an unknown case, they learn other skills on the side, like yeah. uh, search skills. Donald search. Renfrew said, of everything, the single most valuable was just seeing how you used yes. Google. You can be very fast in finding things. It's not just reading full articles. It's about finding information in multiple articles quickly, pretty much at the same time. Mm. So, the rapid research method. The like, rapid uh, research yeah. method. Um, <laughs> trademark. Trademark, yeah. <laughs> we should and probably trademark. Brings to the third big takeaway, which we, the funnest night of the whole thing was definitely the Collective Minds Party. Yeah, Collective Minds Party was great. They uh, eat delicious amazing food, people, delicious amazing food. people, good drinks. They are very energetic, innovative yeah. and growing startup with I think more capabilities and yeah. more vision. They have a good vision. Than I was aware of. We spoke with their C CTO Par about an idea we'd been discussing or you had thought for a while the radiology Olympics to basically nurture the competitive nature of many radiologists to be to have the radiology Olympics whether it's an MSK Olympics or like a fully fledged out with different specialities but certainly within even within MSK we do speed runs we will have like who can report the NMRI the fastest uh, who can report the most NMRI in 10 minutes mm -hmm. so there are a couple of areas where we can create a little bit of a competition and then you know, we can make use of Collective Minds amazing platform to actually facilitate this on a global scale in order to not make a disadvantage of somebody who lives in New Zealand when we post a case in Europe. We were discussing doing it on like maybe a little monthly webinar, a little thing there, but we could just see problems like, oh, how do we little, measure time? Is it, how, is it going to be too unreliable, inconsistent, yeah. or maybe it doesn't really matter, it's just a bit of fun. And then when we start talking with party, yeah. was like, in Collective Minds, we can do all of that. Yeah, all in the back end. They in can the back end, we can dig an up Excel that. file Excel. down for the second. And yeah, then we can amazing. instantly yeah. give you the charts. Certainly looking forward to that in 2025. It's going to be one of the, the bigger projects. They have so many capabilities that we're not using, but yes. they're such a central part of what we do. Now I'm looking mm. forward to the continuous partnership with Collective Minds. And yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> the fourth point that we had. The fourth was... point is interesting because uh, it's exactly 10 years since I've attended RCMA and I just came to the conclusion, the lectures and everything is pretty much the same, uh, especially the lecture side of thing. You know, it's the same PowerPoint lectures, not much innovation in this field. If you have just 10 minutes to, for a topic, you know, you can't really expect an amazing thing if they want to give an overview on, over on a certain thing as opposed to on the YouTube channel when I have a 10 minute topic I just pick one single thing like one structure rather than giving a lecture about the whole thing in 10 minutes it's the real life application as opposed to more like a conceptual talk on a conference like Arsenal mm. yeah maybe re conferences aren't the natural forum to create sticky knowledge change and upskilling in yeah. radiology it's more like to know um, maybe understanding new development on a broad level to understand, okay, there might be a measurement that's important for me to know about, but then they don't really necessarily show you how to actually do it, or maybe just like, in, like go, mm -hmm. going over the measurement quickly. Whereas, you know, if you then at your institution next week and you want to apply this measurement, you will, first of all, not remember, you didn't even see it anyways. So you have to kind of like open some references or something to learn how to do it properly and then also down to the interpretation, is it now actually the right way? So it's nice to have in a fellowship the feedback or on the YouTube channel videos where I show them actually how to measure things like femoral on torsion, where I just made a video of I think 10 or 15 minutes about how to measure the femoral torsion angle. Whereas on a lecture like here at Arsene, they talk about it like for five, five seconds. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the difference. Well, it's uh, interesting to see how things are changing. Probably the first of many RSNAs. Many cool. seeds were planted. Many seeds were planted. All right, that's it. We need to clean up our booth now, I guess.